Well, welcome back to Can Angels Fly? I'm Nancy, and we're here to have spiritual talk. And, and so I'm continuing, and in this part three, I think I'm going to go for a four. I'm just in a talkative mode. I'm going to share um my, my, my demons, and how I came to know that which lives within me, myself. Me, myself, and I. Um, this was in, I'll say, 1990, no, 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 about 2000, 2001. This is when I saw my demon, one of them, anyway. <laughs> uh, I had been on a cleaning binge, cleaning, 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 and washing clothes, washing all the clothes. And I said, okay. I'm going to start a new regimen. And I'm going to wash up all the clothes. And I'm going to iron all the clothes. I don't want not a dirty um, stitch of clothes in my home. And I'm going to hang everything up. Not only am I going to wash them, iron them, and hang everything up, I'm going to hang them up by outfit. You know, kids' uniforms. So they just go get one hanger. Everything's ready. So I had been doing that, like, the whole day. I'm about done. I'm bringing up the last line um clothes on the hanger to hang up i had a big walk-in closet big walk-in closet and it was full i was almost done i was again that was the last round and when i come up and in, 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 into the room and enter the walk-in closet what have my kids done since i've been downstairs to collect that last um batch of clothing Y'all, tell me what you can handle this because I can't handle you already. They had snatched down all the clothes in this hang, in, in this walk in closet, double sided walk in closet, huge. And they were stomping on it, stomping. It was mud on the clothes. I was like, Argh. I mean, the demon within reared up like never before. You know, of course it's been up uh, before, but I didn't meet it this time. Divine made me meet it. Meet it. So, when I entered the closet, they've gone in there and they then snatched everything down, stumped all over it. It's mud all. Oof, I got something else I got to talk about. Spiritual talk might might, might become a um, permanent part of my um, page. Uh, anyway, scatterbrain. They stumped over all these clothes. I done labor so hard and long gone. Uh, eight, nine hours worth of washing, ironing, and hanging up and putting in order. And they just laughing and having a ball, all three. Laughing, having a ball, mud all over the clothes. Oh, I was like, like the Incredible Hawk kind of energy. I was raging. And if I could turn around and see myself, I know my eyes had to be bloodshot red. They probably, probably were popped out my eye sockets and... Oh man, this is inflation. I can feel myself inflate like, ugh, you know. But I'm talking about thunderous rage where I'm shaking the house. I, the house, I remember feeling the house shake. This thunder. And I'm like, what the hell? So uh, the kids, like, of course, are afraid. They dart out the closet into the room. And I turn. Again, I done inflated. Like, ugh, ugh. You know, I'm like raging. The house is shaking. Uh, I know I'm dramatic, but this is exactly what it was. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> the house is shaking. And I'm like going to launch toward them. And Holy Spirit took me like, grabbed me up by my chest. And it was a chair <laughs> not too far away. It took me. Holy Spirit took me and picked me up like by the chest, like bam, and ran me into the chair. So I fall back. 
kids on the other side of the room like, oh, you know, like, what the hell's going on? And But imagine I'm in this rage where the house is trembling and I'm about to lunge toward the kids. And I mean, I'm possessed, fully possessed and out of control. Holy Spirit, only through Holy Spirit's intervention will I say. I didn't make the paper that day uh, for real confession. Holy Spirit said, oh, bam! Knocked me in the chair. Of course, it shocked me and knocked me back into myself. I'm like, oh. But at the same time, when it knocked me back into the chair, out my neck came a double head dragon. The dragon came out, turned around, looked at me, teeth like in the movies, like the sharp fang teeth, growling and drooling. And they were two different colors. One of the cards in the tarot that I, when I look at it, it often reminds me of that double-headed dragon. And that's where um, I'm going to go with it. And it's the chariot card. Uh, the chariot card. I, oh, goodness. Oh, they're right here. I just want to show you this chariot card. So I'm sitting in this chair, startled and in shock. <laughs> Not just that, I didn't just got basically manhandled by spirit and told me to sit and shut up, that kind of thing. It said, I mean, it allowed that inner beast to come out and to be seen. Now, that was a <laughs> eye-opening day. Where is this um, cherry card at? Double headed dragon, like I said, had um, it was two headed, had a long neck. They were each somewhat of a different color. I, I can't tell you in detail the color of them, uh, but I just know that they were two different colors. And wow, and they had a mouth full of fangs. And they drooled profusely. God dang it, this chariot card is covered up. I did find it, but it's covered up so you can't see the image. Let me look at this deck. I got to get another deck of cards. Uh, they drooled profusely. And it scared me. So um, when I say it scared me, I mean, scared me. So, universe, God, was just revealing to me what was in me, what my kids were experiencing, you know, what they had seen, you know. Although that spirit to my children, unless they were able to, excuse me, see in spirit and, uh, did not, wasn't able to verbalize it because of their, you know, level of in, intelligence as a child. Uh, all they saw was mama raging, you know. But a person that could see in the spirit would have seen this double-headed dragon, this fierce, fierce creature. I like the other chariot card better. But as you can see, there are the two, uh, I don't know what they called these. Uh, let's see. Where is it at? Can I get closer? Those two remind me of the double-headed dragon. Um, again, they it had a big, big, two big mouths and all these fanged teeth that all drooled and dribbled and growling and whew, and slimy. Oh, it was horrible. Now, the reason why I want to show you the chariot card, because this fellow here would represent me. And, and that's what spirit was showing me. Now, yeah, that, that was before, you know, all these experiences I talked to you about have led me to where I am today, um, performing tarot card, uh, tarot readings. Well, this is what spirit was showing me. He was showing me this part of me. This double-headed dragon, very fierce, very violent, um, out of control. 
And that's what the chariot card means in reverse. Spirit, when spirit slammed me into that chair, man, man handled me. Poof! Into that chair that was basically uh, halfway across the room, threw me, threw me off my feet and told me to sit down. And basically, he ain't had to say it because it was within the force of his uh, slam, of its slam, that um, this double-headed dragon was ruling. I was, this chariot card in reverse means out of control, you know, um, totally discombobulated I was. And, um, but basically just out of control. And that's what I, I was. In that console, in that moment, my kids didn't move. They didn't move. They stood against the, the opposite wall because Number one, mama was raging. That was pretty scary to know that they were seeing that which was in me uh, manifest, mm, perform in the physical realm. And then for God to show me what was fueling my rage um, in the spirit, that they were dealing with the equivalent. You know what I'm saying? Understand what I'm saying? They were dealing with the equivalent. And it wasn't until I saw that he let me see or forced me to see this. Did I understand what I was doing? Now, if he hadn't stopped me again, I said, I might have ended up on the news that day. Um, but in that, in that, in that lesson, in that life lesson, in that experience, um, God taught me this. He taught me this. Control. Control yourself. That's what the chariot card means. Control. Being a master. You know what I'm saying? Being able to um, manage yourself, you know, and, um, in, in like a champion way and, and not to give way. It's just like always keep your hands on the reins, reins of what? That which lives within. And now when I say that which lives within, I'm talking about within each of us. In part two, I spoke about spoke about a young man I know that was bombarded with multiple uh, demonic influences to the point he was possessed. Now, what I'm seeing in this video, part three, is two, part two, no, one, two, this is three, I think this is three, um, and going four, four, is um, each of us have a spirit within. Now, not just our spirit, there is an additional spirit. And in part one, I talked about the ego. We all have a ego, whether it is shrunken or blown all out of proportion, we have an ego. And that ego can be under the influence of um, dark energies, uh, negative energies, and uh, it wreaks havoc. It can wreak havoc in your life. And my point of bringing that up is to talk about um, the spirits that also, other than ours, that reside within our being. This cherry card. This cherry card. Oh, keep control of the reins. And so, each of us has a spirit that is accompanying us. When did that uh, spirit infiltrate you or I or anybody? Well, I have evidence, experienced, or witnessed um, two uh, different mm, possibilities. It's kind of it's hard to tell. When an um, individual is a baby, hard to feel. So, very, very, very young people, you know, within years, you can tell that there is something there other than your baby or that baby, you know. Um, but along the way, through life experiences, we get jumped, is what I'm, I, I, I'm willing to argue. We get jumped. From life experiences, whether it's something that we experience within our formative years or whatever, you know, it's um, I think it's important that parents really try to safeguard and watch over their children 
um, keep that child covered. Keep prayer over them and, and to watch because different entities overtake us at different times in our lives. We seem to be humanity people seem to um, get and um, what's the word exercise like exorcism exercise these some of these demons out. And when I say some of us seem to exercise some of these demons out, I guess that's where I'll be going with uh, part number four, um, talking about getting rid of things like um, alcoholism. That's getting rid of a spirit. Or how about this um, oh, a gluttony? That's getting rid of a spirit. Or how about being promiscuous? That's getting rid of a spirit. You know, but people are overtaken at different times and different phases of their lives, dealing with different spirits. Uh, and demons and um, etc. But this double-headed demon, I'm sorry, I got my mind to start um, going other places. Back to this here double-headed demon. Is it gone for me? No. Do I have control of the reins now? Yes. Currently, in my life, I have control of the reins. Is there something that can make me lose control of the reins? I know that it is something out here. So I always have to stay a safeguard myself. What they say, stay prayed up, stay with all my God, so to say. Got to stay there. Because I can, now that I know him, know him, you know, I know him, know him, know him, and know how he look and everything, and and I, I've paid attention, and I start looking back and, and retrospect after that experience. Oh, I know him now, you know. I didn't know him at first, but now I know him. Well, I know what will trigger him. So most of, in my life, I learned some of what will trigger him. Now, the uh, devil's a cunning mother sucker, so, you know, he can come back and create something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I had a... Uh, a viewer uh, asked ab ask about tricksters, and we talk about spirit. In in, in my uh, video, I made "Do you hear voices?" and that was is um, the cunning ist trickster, you know. So he might devise a plan. I don't know, but all I can do is learn from my experiences, which I have, and I've learned what. Uh, triggers can trigger trigger that particular demon and cause him to rear up and to transform me when i was describing the rage i also described this expansion this uh blowing up and remember i said spirits have an appearance when in a person and that was one of them the eyes, how I describe if I could see myself, it's the eyes. Uh, it's the it was rage so violent. Like I said, when I when I say it, it, sh it shook the house. Um, I was not joking or what's the word? Um, exaggerating. Hmm. Interesting. I want to tell you about another demon that I have dealt with, um, but. Before I move on to that demon, I want to talk about, still about this double-headed demon and the rage. is the rage. Um, another time I was forced, this is having control of the reins, I was forced to allow that double-headed dragon to do what he do. You know, do what he do. And... It was witnesses to the event. They couldn't see what was going on right on the other side of my home door. But they said all they could feel, even in their houses and down the block, was the house trembling. You know, the shaking. They could feel trembling. And when they came out of their houses, all they could do was follow the vibration that landed them in front of my home. 
And they was like, what was that? Some people described it as they thought it was a man, a real big man, literally shaking the house. Um, <laughs> and the reason why I share the, the testimony of witnesses to this rage is to show you that when I say this double-headed demon, that which lives within me, I'm just using me as an example. I'm, I, I contend that we all got something going on. You might not have a double-headed demon. You might have something else going on. You know what I'm saying? And like in my case, it was like God was like, get control of them reins before you let this demon dictate your behavior and your actions and then influences your physical world. Had God, had Holy Spirit not taken me in, Wham me back into that seat and told me basically sit down, sugar. I may have done something I would have regretted. And <laughs> been on the news, be in jail, been to hurt somebody. And uh, so the message, the lesson there, he only had to teach me once, was get control of your reins. Some of us, I've talked to other people, and they are aware that they have something else going on within them. Mm -hmm. And some deny it, but can talk about it in detail, but yet deny it. Like I said, there is a, a level of ignorance or a naivety that does exist uh, when it comes to the physical interacting with the spiritual world, the spiritual acting, interacting with the physical world. And there are others that will admit especially in small, intimate circles and settings where a person feels secure and safe, they'll tell you, hey, I know there's something else within me. And, you know, and most of the people that will confess it will say, I don't want that to come out. I got to keep control over that. Now, I've heard that over and over and over again. So in this video, I just ask you, do you have an um, uh, uh, entity living within you with your spirit, you know? And do you know what it is? Do you know what it looks like? And do you have control over it? Do you have the reins, you know? Um, again, I say, do you have the reins? And I brought that up. I brought up the cherry card because it can either lead you to destruction, that entity, that dark, demonic entity can lead you to destruction or if you are a master and you control your reins it can also be a force that you can use in life to help um, advance you and to help make sure that you are safe but you gotta have control of the reins and don't underestimate it well anyway thank you for coming to visit me Nancy Eck and Angels Fly I'm going for a part for the spiritual talk because I just feel like talking to y'all today. Bye.